Hello friends, resistance to theory. <coughs> who is resisting theory? Like who is afraid of Virginia Woolf? <laughs> like that. The title is, it is challenging now. Resistance to theory. Actually, it's a widely anthologized. Anthology. Many anthologists will find that. So it is anthologized. And uh, it, it appeared in the form of an essay. Later it became part of a book by that name. That is Resistance Theory. This is by Paul Deman. You know, you are familiar with him. And this is, he was a renowned literary theorist and critic of the A school of deconstruction. So this is important. The essay it runs on that line. You should look at that essay like that. I mean, from this uh, point of view or angle, the deconstruction, AIL, YAL, AIL, AIL school of de deconstruction, I write this. AIL, F, AIL school of, of deconstruction. So that is the point. So look at this essay or read this essay from that angle, deconstruction. AIL school of Deconstruction, he was very familiar with the Jacques Derrida, the ordinator of deconstruction, we can say. And then this appeared in the Yale French Studies in 1982. Uh, this is a key statement in the post structuralist approach to literary studies. Now I am giving you introduction. Now you may be asking, sir, you please tell us about the resistance. Who is resisting, etc. <laughs> the point is, the main theoretical interest of literary theory consists in the impossibility of its definition. That's the point. The main argument is that. It's impossible to, main argument is one, impossibility of or impossible to define theory. You cannot, so theory resists. Theory itself resists theory. That's a beautiful situation. <laughs> theory. I am resisting myself like that. See, someday there is some kind of, no, I don't want to, uh, I mean, move away from the main topic. So, well, first thing is, theory resists itself. We have to see how. Is that? And second point we have to see, and theory resists itself, and so it's impossible to define. Second is, resistance to theory also comes from traditional practitioners of theory and criticism. That is the second one. This is, where we can understand, traditional practitioners traditional practitioners of of criticism, literary criticism, we are speaking about that. And literary theory, hope you will understand that. Literary criticism. So these are the two sources or two areas from where the resistance comes. Resistance comes. Understand? What is the theory itself? That resists. Some people when they eat, they omit <laughs> like that. So theory itself omits or resists. Second is traditional practitioners of criticism and because they don't want anything new. Humans, no, they don't want uh, uh, when 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 something new is given to you, first first reaction you resist it. Exactly like that. This is what I mean. Okay, let's say why. How and why? So today we will discuss or try to find out how and why. Okay. I suppose now this is clear to you. What are we going to do? Resistance comes from theory itself and also traditional practitioners of general criticism. That, that much is clear. Okay. Now, how does theory itself resist? Think of deconstruction. Now, deconstruction one of the basic or key ideas of the, or tenets you can say of deconstruction is that eh, language does not have a semantic function per se. 
this thing language does not have does not have a semantic function a semantic function per se per se is a latin expression in itself by itself or in itself language does not have a semantic function means language does not carry any meaning in language there is no meaning in language there is no thing then what is language language is a system of so according to this language is is a system of signifiers and the signifiers no thing in it you know when and i say cake i write cake is there cake in it i will write on a piece of paper cake and i say christmas cake <laughs> can you eat it no so language does not carry any meaning that's the meaning that's what is meant by saying language does not have a semantic means meaning semantic you know semantics means the branch of linguistics that deals with meaning so no meaning function per se means in itself that is simply put that is language does not uh, does not hold anything any matter in it when you say cat there is no cat in it when you say day there is no day in it uh, for the man himself in the essay he says no sane person will try to grow grapes under the luminosity of day Lum luminosity means light you write day then will can you grow grapes under it because there is no light i think it now it is clear to you or i say i write pen and give it to you say this is pen is there pen in that or i say uh, i say uh, god eh? i write god and give it to you is there god in that so this is the fundamental problem or you can say the the basic idea behind deconstruction language does not have i uh, in other words we say the so called signifieds they are just mental concepts when i say cat it is only a mental concept cake it is a mental concept it's not a matter it's not a material it is not a thing this is what deconstruction say you got now you can understand so with that in your mind read this language is a system of signifiers and signified independent of the external world external world language does not guide the external world with it therefore language is autonomous language is autonomous language is autonomous language does not have any matter in it so why do people think that there is matter in language there is thing in language why because paul demand he says they confuse there is a confusion confusion between materiality of the signifier with the materiality or and the materiality so better it is and the materiality these are not exact words then materiality of the signifier so and i say not exact quotation i'm just uh, after reading i got this art i mean i'm explaining on this <laughs> all right so when i say materiality of the of the signifier so let us say cake this is a matter you can see you can feel the letters so that you can see you can touch the letters like this pen you can see this you can touch this so this is material materiality of the 
signify. But there is no material, material, materiality of the signifier. So signifier is, this is signifier. Signifier, okay. But what about signified? Is there that materiality here? No. So the problem is humans, we are all of us. Huh? We think that language means things. Language, things are in order. It is not so. That is a fact. Need not deconstructionist, need not tell us. Now, when you think, ah, oh, that is correct. A fan fan is material, a sign. But there is no material in a fan. So, the, pro the whole problem comes for prior to 1960s. People thought that. Means we are, I also thought, you also thought that when you say cake, there is cake. When when is there is a shirt, when you say shirt, there is shirt. No. There's no materiality of the shirt in the signified. That is that much is clear. So these are some basic points to know about the deconstruction. I have given half a dozen lectures on deconstruction. But my lectures are uh, of the not in <laughs> Normal lectures, normal, not abnormal, but I view and I was trying to explain it uh, from uh, using what we call a, a layman's point of view, not a scholar's point of view. But I just wanted to put that concept across. Anybody can go through that and see what I have said. I, the, the, finally, you will find it comes to the conclusion like this. Okay, so we are speaking about. Paul Lehman says a resistance to theory. He was a prominent, a renowned critic, a theorist of the Ale School of Deconstruction. So you have to see the premises of the deconstruction first, otherwise you will not understand. So, so what happens here? Here, language does not have a semantic function per se. Means in language there is no meaning. Then we say meaning, what is that meaning? We have already seen social has said, it is arbitrary, it is conventional, and there is no logic, there is no natural connection between uh, K signifier and signifier. There is, uh, this is, instead of that we say like this, there is, uh, or Parliament says, we are confusing uh, materiality of the signifier with the materiality of the signified. Understand that? Or the other way around also. Materiality of the uh, signifier we are coming. We think that there is matter in this. Alright. Uh, now we come back to uh, literature. Keep this in your, in your mind. Okay. So now in literature. What do you do with literature? What do you use in literature? What is the stuff? Language. <laughs> yes, so literature is Literature, the stuff is language. And we are saying in language there is no matter. Got that? Language don't matter. Then you say take a novel. What is it? It's a series of signifiers and signifiers. Far from the mudding rock. <laughs> right from the very beginning to the end, you have got signifiers and there's no matter in it. You understand? Then language is, Paul Lehman said, one of the most disfigured signifiers. Language. Disfigured. And also he says it is unstable. Language is unstable. Unstable and also disfigured. What does that mean? Same. These are words taken from the essay. If you can, when you go through the essay, same thing. That is, in language there is no meaning, no matter, nothing. But you are using language, without using language you cannot uh, do literature or literary works or text. You cannot produce text without language. Now, in language there is no meaning. 
So in literature is not a place where there is meaning. Because you are using language for literature. Language has no meaning. You are using a, uh, you are using signifiers in the, in the la in, in literature, and signifiers have no meaning, no semantic function. That's one point. Then what about criticism of theory? Criticism of theory is meta language, meta language about literature, about literature. Meta, meta means other. So one is language, the other is meta language. Criticism, theory, your appreciation, history, historical study, ideology, maybe uh, studies based on ideology, Marxist feminism and so on. So meta language about literature. Literature has no, it's not a place of meaning. Then how can meta language be a place of meaning? Understand? So you are using meta language, theory is meta language. It is impossible to define theory. <laughs> you know the, that argument is very interesting. No? So you are using, first, the other things you should keep in your mind. Literature has no semantic function per se. Per se means in itself. Then such a thing you are using for creating literature. So literature has no, literature is not a place of meaning. You are using criticism and theory is also language. You call it meta language or other language. So if literature is not a place of meaning, meta language also is not a place of meaning. Therefore you cannot define theory. Therefore theory is its own resistance. Theory is its own, because you are unable to define. The main theoretical interest of literary theory consists in the impossibility of its definition. When uh, Baldiman wrote this and uh, submitted this as a, first they rejected it. What nonsense you are writing. <laughs> theoretical, literary consists of the impossibility of definition. That's true, he proved it. I think now you agree with me, isn't it? Language is not a transparent medium for communicating anything. <laughs> That's it. What I have told you so far, once again I am saying, language is not a transparent, transparent medium, medium for communicating communicating anything. So you cannot communicate theory. So you cannot define theory. It's not a transparent medium of coming because in language there is nothing except difference. So see, language there is only absence, no presence. These things you should uh, hold in your mind. Whether you agree with this or not, that is not the question. We are now, what we are doing is we are trying to explain <laughs> this deconstructionist view of, view of theory. Theory cannot be defined and that is the first resistance. Understand? Now, the second resistance. This is first resistance. Now second resistance. Very, very, very beautifully argued, isn't it? I like this logic very much. This is really very interesting. You come up, you come to the evolution that theory resists itself. Because theory you use language. That is the you use language. Language is a disfigured, not a transparent medium for communicating anything. That is point one. Now, point two. Second point is, as we have already seen, theory is resisted by traditional practitioners. Uh, resistance by resistance by traditional practitioners. Who are these traditional practitioners? You know, some of the names you know. T.S. again, famous. 
Isn't it? Clear and proof. Remember, understanding poetry, understanding drama, a series of books. Clear and proof. Vela can warn. Rene Vela can warn. Fields of light. See, I will write down. Brooks and Warren, some of the books in this resistance by traditional practitioners. What is traditional practitioners? What have they done? Clear book. Clear books. And, well, and uh, Warren. Is it uh, is it Clear book and Warren. Uh, uh, yes, Warren. Yes. Warren. Their book is Understanding Poetry. Understanding Poetry. How what can you understand when there is nothing? Nothing in land. Vellak and Varan, theory of literature. One second. Vellak and Varan. Vellak and Varan. These are titles which I have taken from the essay. Theory of literature. <coughs> theory of literature. These are famous books. Right to 1960s. Some of some people in the academic in the academic uh, circles, these are like Bible <laughs> for some day. The Reuben Brown, the field of light. Reuben Brown. Reuben Brown. The field of light. Field of light. So very famous books. Rural, rural. Or you, then you have got uh, uh, see this the mirror and uh, lamp language as gesture. See, then verbal the verbal icon. Oh, that is famous. The verbal icon. The verbal icon. Send it. So these are some of famous, famous, famous practice names. You have got formulas, cultural series. Then you have got uh, what is that uh, formulation? Is new criticism, yes. cultural studies, TSD, existentialism, Sartre, our back, Croce, Benedetto Croce, Alonso, big names. These names are written there in the, we can get it from the essay. So please read it. There's no point in my writing out it because this is there as a Paragraph, the whole paragraph deals with these people, their name and all those things. Now what happens is that, <coughs> as I told you, humans resist change. Suppose in your room, you are keeping a computer table at a particular place. Somebody comes and says, oh, this is not a place, you have to move it to that side. You will say no. Your first reaction is no. You resist. The same thing happens in theory also. These are traditional practitioners. And all their approach, meaning-based. This meaning-based. For example, aesthetics. Aesthetics is the effect of meaning. Aesthetics. Ideologies. Ideologies. Historical study. Historical study. And then what else? What else? So a biography of the author. Biography. Biography of the author. Ideologies and genre. Genre studies and different different uh, terms, you know, tone and figure of speech, rhetoric. And in fact, this is all this, all this you will find they are rhetorical in their approach. Figurative and rhetorical. How do you say that this is aesthetically beautiful, seeing the rhetorical effect of the work of art? But there is no meaning. Therefore, when they found, huh, this is a brand new, uh, we, don't, we don't agree, because centuries we have been in London as horrors, Aristotle's poetics, lyrical ballads, and then uh, Professor Lyrical Ballads, Coleridge, uh, Cultural Studies, Matthew Arnold, T.S. Eliot, uh, Lewis, Far Lewis. You have got uh, academicians like uh, Clayton Brook or uh, Rene Bellac, Auerbach, 
and existentialists we have already seen. All of them, for them it was a, it was a shock. What do you mean? It's no meaning. So far we were holding that. Aesthetic means effect of meaning. Rhetoric. Is that it? Based on rhetoric and the aesthetics. Here comes parliament. This is not at all theory. You have misunderstood. Your foundations are wrong. You have erected this, your theories on the basis that language is language is a transparent medium for communicating truth. Your edifice, your structures, you have erected on the basis that language is a transparent medium for communicating truth, while it is it does not communicate anything. Because language does not have a semantic function per se. Understand? So naturally what will happen? They will resist. So this is, I told you at the beginning, these are the two ways resistance comes up against theory. Now what is theory? That we will see in the next class. Now you got the idea of resistance. First, theory resists itself because it uses language. Language is not a transparent medium for communicating anything. Secondly, theory is metal language. Secondly, traditional practitioners of criticism and theory, they resist because for them they simply cannot digest this. Impossible. Understand? Resistance comes from traditional practitioners. Now I think it is clear to you when I say resistance to theory by Paul demand. Two reasons, or two areas, or two sources, or from two corners, resistance. One, language itself. Because it is impossible to communicate anything to language. Language is an independent medium of signifiers and signifiers. Please don't confuse signifies the materiality of signifies with the materiality of the signifies. Because there is no matter in signifies, only concepts. But one thing I tell you, as Paul Deman has said, this does not deny the referential function of language. Please understand that also. You can say looking at the thing or Taking a referent in your hand, you can say, this is such and such thing. So that function remains. You understand that that function remains. Hope you understood what I have been telling you. The two corners from where resistance comes. So you will continue. Then what is literary theory? We will see in the next class. Till then, bye.